And they're saying, hold on a minute, why the name Muhammad? Why would you use that name, the Blessed One? Unless, of course, there might be someone that this is referring to. Could there be someone named Muhammad in the seventh century uh, that, that they're redacting their Muhammad back onto? Or did they in, in actually ex No need for introduction. Time to give these guys an education. Fire intro. In this video, we got Al Fadi and Jay Smith trying to educate us about uh, the history of Muhammad, peace be upon him, and they're claiming that he never existed. And I'm going to show you how ignorant these two guys are and how unfamiliar they are with Islamic sources. But ignorance isn't their main issue. The much bigger issue is a lack of consistency. And I have a question for these guys that will help us get to the bottom of things. I hope that their viewers, the Christian audience, um, ask them and, and press them on the questions that I'm going to be asking them towards the end of the video. Let's see the first biography. The first biography of what Muhammad did is written by this guy here, Ibn Ishaq. Right. Look at his date, 765. Hundred and. 40 years already, or 30 Ooh, do, 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 do. years after Muhammad's death. That's a problem, isn't it? I mean, it's impossible that Ibn Ishaq lived for that long. No, he did not live for, I mean, he, he, it's yeah. obviously he was not living when Jesus was living. He did not know, I'm sorry, well, Muhammad. Jesus, of course, Muhammad was living. Right. He would not have known him, he would not have seen him, he would not have heard anything about him. Right. So you cannot say he's an eyewitness. Did he get it from the eyewitnesses? We have no idea. So it says, the life of Muhammad, a translation of Ibn Ishaq's Siratul Rasulullah, which means the biography of the Prophet that's Muhammad. Right. Sirat Rasulullah, exactly. That's that's a sirah right there. That is a lie. Yeah. This is what everybody has been taught. This is what you have been taught. I have been taught that this was written by Ibn Ishaq. Look how thick it is. Right, and and reason why uh, people buy into it because no one, sadly, either dares to publicly question it, or at least if they question it, they keep it to themselves and they don't bring it up out front, basically. Actually, the book in Jay's hand is by Alfred Guillaume, who was a Christian. So when Al Fadi is saying nobody dares to publicly question it, um, he's being absolutely silly and he's trying to play into this whole conspiracy idea. The reason why Guillaume refers to the book as the life of Muhammad by Muhammad bin Ishaq it's because it's a reconstruction of the original. It's not only based on the rendition by Ibn Hisham. Allow me to explain. Ibn Ishaq wrote a book about the life of Muhammad, peace be upon him. He taught this book to multiple students that wrote it from him. He continued to revise his book, which is why his students have different renditions of it. His student, Ziyad al-Bakka'i, taught the book to Ibn Hisham. This is the most common version of the book today. Other versions of Ibn Ishaq can be found elsewhere, quoted by Tabari, for example, and others. This right. real, we're going to be talking about this later on. Right. So let's go back to the slide. So then who wrote this? Not Ibn Ishaq. This is the guy that wrote it, Ibn Hisham. I'm going to throw away Ibn Ishaq. Go back to the slide. I've thrown him away. He's now di di disappeared. Why? Because he just does not exist in this discussion. He, he, we know nothing from Ibn Ishaq. We know from Ibn Hisham. This is incorrect because we actually have Ibn Ishaq's book that comes through the path of Yunus bin Bukhayr. This is not new information, by the way, since the rendition by Yunus was printed in the 1970s. Unfortunately, both of these experts are oblivious to it. Uh, I'd also like to add that Sirat ibn Ishaq isn't the earliest Sira available to us. I actually have a copy of Sulaiman bin Tarkhan's Sira. Um, Sulaiman is actually a student of Anas bin Malik, one of the servants of the Prophet, peace be upon him. By the way, the reason why uh, Jay and Al Fadi are trying to push back the sources as far as possible is because they want you to believe that everything that we know about Muhammad, peace be upon him, is unreliable and so that they can uh, push their theory, which I'll mention at the end of the video. But there's another genre, and that's what we know as the, the sayings. The sayings of the Prophet Muhammad, that is the Hadith. The first to write them down in a, a, a categorized form to compile them is Al-Buhari. Look at his dates, 870. Right. Um, that's absolutely incorrect. We actually have multiple works that predate Al-Buhari. We have, for example, Musannaf ibn Abi Shayba, which predates Al-Buhari. Um, I got a copy of uh, Musnad Abu Dawood al-Tayalisi right here. Um, I got a copy of Musnad Ahmed right here. Um, I got a copy of Muatta Malik right here. Um, all these books predated Bukhari by quite a bit. And the earliest of these books is Sahifat Hammam, which was written um, 
within 50 years from the death of the Prophet, peace be upon him, Hammam is also a student of a companion of the Prophet, peace be upon him. You also then have Sahih Muslim who died in 875, then you have Al-Dimiri who dies in 884, yeah. uh -huh. uh, then you have Ibn Majah who dies in 887, uh, followed Abu Dawood. by Abu Dawood who dies in 899, right. and then Al- an -Nisai. I should let you read their names because my, my Arabic is desecrated. No problem. An so these are the... I love how uh, Jay asks Al-Fadi to help him pronounce one of the names and ironically Al-Fadi gets it wrong. Um, Al-Fadi, his name is not Al-Nisai, it's Al-Nisai. Al-Nisai is a section in which your good friend David buys his clothes from. There is another, two other genres that come up, and there we'll put them in brown. The tafsir, which are the commentaries on the Quran, and then you have the tariq, which are the histories of mankind. That's so right. those are the four genres. Who is the first to write down the tafsir and tariq? Well, it's this character right here, Atabi. Oh, buddy, exactly. But look at his dates. I know. That's I mean, the 10th century. As usual, Jay is ignorant about books of tafsir, and we have classical tafsir that predate At-Tabari by quite a while, like uh, Tafsir Abdul Razak. I got here a copy of Tafsir Ibn Juraj, which predates Tafsir At-Tabari by over 150 years. By the way, uh, Al-Fadi, since you are not correcting Jay um, in regards to these basics, I have to assume that you are as ignorant as him. Let's move on to another criticism made by these guys. None of the traditional writers who talk about Muhammad, what he did and what he said, either lived or worked in Mecca and Medina, like the tradition su suggests. They were much too far to the north of Mecca and came from the west and east of Baghdad. I'm not really sure what the argument is here. Jay is speaking about authors of these works being originally from faraway places or that they're being, being written in faraway places. Um, in order to suggest that these works are not reliable. It just doesn't really make much sense since a historian that's taking information from another source doesn't need to be um, at the original place of an event. Either way, all of these scholars ultimately go to Al Hijaz um, and they take hadiths from areas like Mecca and Medina there, so I'm not, I'm not really sure where they're going with this point. By the way, their alternative theory is that the original Muhammad is an Iraqi Christian that was put into power by the Persian Emperor Khusro. Anyways, as I was mentioning earlier, I have a question for these two that's gonna help us get to the bottom of this. What's your criteria, Ya Jay and Ya Fadi, for an authentic historical event? Does it need to be from an eyewitness? Does it need to be written at that specific place? Please give us details in order for us to determine whether Islam or the history of Islam is reliable and to determine if the history of Christianity is reliable as well. It's only after you provide us with a detailed criteria that we can finally get to the bottom of this. But I'll tell you this, you cannot have a criteria and be consistent with it because the most minute information about the Prophet peace be upon him is more authentic than major doctrinal attributions to Jesus. From our historical reports, we can prove that Muhammad peace be upon him ate chicken while you cannot even prove that Jesus peace be upon him claimed to be God. You see, we take our religion from men that saw the Prophet, peace be upon him, while he was alive. While you take your religion from a man that claims he saw Jesus after he died. Okay, I'm done talking. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. I want to make sure you always get notified when we release a new video. So please click the bell to be notified. And of course, make sure to subscribe to this channel.